I'm Beth Macy, and I wrote the book Raising Lazarus, Hope, Justice, and the Future of America's Overdose Crisis because I think Americans need to understand what it's going to take to reduce our soaring overdose deaths and deaths of despair in this country. Raising Lazarus starts out next to a McDonald's dumpster where a nurse practitioner who's volunteering for a harm reduction group is meeting somebody in chaotic substance use, an IV injector, and the man shows up, he's late, he's high, he's crying because he knows if he can't get off the needle, he's going to die. And I think the way you see this nurse practitioner showing up for him is really the answer to turning the crisis back. We know without a doubt that the introduction of OxyContin in 1996 and the marketing of this false narrative that opioids were largely safe for all kinds of pain has led to where we are now. We started with the prescription pill epidemic, then it went to a heroin epidemic. Now more recently, you're seeing more people are dying of fentanyl than anything else. The reason that the increase continues to climb is because of stigma, because we haven't really offered treatment at the scale to match the scale of the crisis. Since my third book, Dope Sick, came out in 2018, and particularly since the book was made into a TV series for Hulu, I think we are starting to see stigma against people with substance use disorders start to wane a bit. This idea to meet people where they are, to meet people in even chaotic substance use, even active substance use, where they are with love, it, it works. It maybe doesn't work the first time or the second or the third or the fourth time. But, you know, there's a great story I tell in the book where a person who's a longtime heroin user goes into a needle exchange and the person at the front desk says, what can I help you with? And he says, I'm hungry. I need a sandwich. Now that young man is now middle-aged and he runs a treatment program and a harm reduction center in Jamestown, New York. And that story is multiplied over and over. It's still largely unknown that if we reach out to people, even when they're in chaotic drug use, and don't demand that they become sober, but rather give them the tools to help themselves want to enter recovery, then that's the real special sauce. About a third of the book centers on a group of activists called the Ad Hoc Committee for Accountability, which is a name that doesn't do them justice. But what they've done is this is a group of activists, people who are formerly in addiction, like the famous photographer Nan Golden, but also people who have lost children to OxyContin and to other opioids, have banded together to get the voices heard in bankruptcy court. Now, Purdue filed for bankruptcy in 2019, and then they filed in a jurisdiction knowing that the judge there favored third-party releases. It sounds wonky, and it is wonky. But what I do in Raising Lazarus is I really tease it apart, and I tell the story from the perspective of these very frustrated activists who are working so hard to get their stories heard because Purdue wants you to not really understand what's gone down. They want you to forget. They want you to get lost in the legal minutia and to forget who created this man-made disaster. There's a pro bono lawyer facing off against lawyers who make almost $2,000 an hour who is just up night and day filing briefs to get their voices heard, irritating the judge, being threatened with contempt. I hope that people come to understand that this isn't a group of people we can just write off. We write them off at our own peril. Almost not a family in America hasn't been touched somehow by this crisis. I'm hoping that people come away with the sense that this is a treatable medical condition if only we begin to make the treatments easier to access than the dope.